Now we're finally getting into the heart of the issue as we explore the Watchtower's teachings about who Jesus is. Listen as she grabs a mix of unrelated, disconnected passages of scripture and tries to suggest they are a defense of her claims. But she states them as matter of fact, like we should all just know this already. This is how profoundly indoctrinated she is. I know that she was raised in the cult and then as a young adult left the organization but continued to believe many of its teachings and then sometime later she rejoined. So I don't think she has really even considered any other possibilities outside of what she believed as a child. She has already been poisoned against churches and even daring to see what Christians actually believe. Further, I know she has relatives who are involved in a wacko fringe group that claim to be Christian, which I'm sure solidified her belief that the Watchtower must be right. As with many XJWs, I suspect that even if she might have questioned some of the things she was taught as a child, she didn't question that teaching and continued to believe that historic Orthodox Christianity is corrupt. When Jesus was resurrected, Three days later, he became a spirit creature. And he, as a spirit creature, then he wasn't an earthly creature. So when that curtain was torn, that meant that Jesus was no longer as a human, but going to be a spirit creature. He was entered as if entered heaven itself. And he did enter heaven itself to present the blood of, of, of his sacrifice to cover mankind's sin. He presented it to Jehovah. So was he spirit before he came to earth? Yes. He okay. Was. So you believe he was spirit, then he became just man, and then he went back to being just spirit? Yeah, the, the, the Bible indicates that. Because in, 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 um, when he was baptized, the... Uh, on him, which was Holy Spirit, the heavens were opened up. Mm -hmm. Well, that means he understood. He, he, at that time, he really understood his relationship with Jehovah, and everything was opened up to him, and that's why he went in the wilderness. He communicated with God for 40 days. And uh, in John, when he, before he, in, before he died, he, uh, he asked his, Jesus, Jehovah to uh, to ha to have that they would have the same relationship that you and I had. Ha you and I had not have. This was before he died. Right. Okay. So had not mm -hmm. have not have now as an earthly person. Interesting. But what okay. we had as when I was a spiritual person. That's what he's saying. Okay, so Christ was was separated from having a relationship with Jehovah when he was in the form of a man? When he was a child, he was growing. And uh, as a child, he didn't understand everything. Okay. No. Okay, so he didn't have the same relationship. No, well, it, he probably uh, had learned from his mother that of, his, of how he was conceived and things like that, I imagine, you know, okay. that. That would be just a logical thing. Hmm. But, uh, yes, the Bible is very vivid on uh, that Jesus. In, in the Bible, it says also that Jesus, and Paul said Jesus, would, well, in, in Acts, when he was talking to the, uh, to the Jews, Pharisees there, and he was saying, this Jesus that you... This Jesus that you killed is is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, mm -hmm. which means before, now, and in the future. Mm -hmm. He's one individual. Mm -hmm. He's one individual. He had a he had a heavenly life for centuries. He was the firstborn of creation. He's the he's the one referred to in in Genesis when uh, when Jehovah said, "Let us make man." In our, in our image. Okay. So um, he was... Now, my understanding is you believe Jesus is Michael the Archangel. Is that right? 
Yes, and that's okay. and that's not hard to, to okay. uh, that's that's not a, a stretch of the imagination, as I say, because um, in uh, biblical times, uh, people had more. Sometimes were given different names. You know, we had one name and then another name. What she's doing here is avoiding the ontological difference between human beings and angelic beings, instead focusing on people being sometimes given more than one name. It's a very deliberate tactic to avoid having to answer the question outright. They are well trained in this area because it's a question they are often asked. I have found that the Watchtower loves to muddy and ignore ontological distinctions. For instance, the word God as a being doesn't have any real meaning to them because they say that the Father is God, Jesus is a God, angels are gods, and even humans can be gods, taking Psalm 82 verse 6 out of context, of course. When they do that, you can't really deal with the clear categories. It's intended to create confusion so that you'll feel too stupid or unqualified to even think about the subject, and instead just rely on the watchtower to sort it all out for you. It's a classic high control group strategy. Also note that high control groups or cults always mess with the nature of Jesus, redefining him as just an angel, just a prophet, just a man, etc. They all say the triune God of the Bible is a lie and that they have found the true way. Okay, but where was Jesus called Michael? In uh, Daniel and in Revelation. And let's just go to the Revelation. That's a good one. But it, it, he, he says he's referred to in in, uh, in in Daniel too. But in Revelation, that's a really good explanation. Okay, Revelation. Revelation chapter twelve. And which verse? Um, well, uh, let's go to chapter. Uh, I mean, uh, verse uh, seven. Okay, and there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon, the dragon and his angels waged war. That's, so you think that... And then, um, and then you could read, the, actually, you can virtually, you read right up to nine. Okay, and they were not strong enough, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And then that verse nine also. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Michael is referred to there in verse 7. Yeah. And his angels. Right. And in other parts of the Bible, Michael is referred to as an archangel. Okay. And an archangel... There's only one archangel. It's, there's never, there's, there's no term that says archangels. Arch means number one or main. Sort of like Satan was before he fell. No, Satan wasn't an arch. He was just a, uh, an angel. You know, he, but he, he, beca- he thought he, beca- he would he was, become something. But he was like the most beautiful and the, he obviously had a high authority above the angels. Uh, not, no, not, the Bible doesn't say that. He was beautiful, but then the angels were beautiful. But he got stuck on he got stuck on himself. He became too proud. Oh yeah, I know. He was don't, a good looking don't disagree angel with you there. <laughs> got himself. He should be God. Right. Absolutely. Which is why he got kicked out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so there's only one archangel. And in Revelation, he's called Michael. But okay, uh, and yeah. he has angel. He has angels. That Michael has angels. Okay. And Jesus, when he when he was de- uh, dead already, but he materialized. This might seem minor on the surface, but she's using that word "materialized" very purposefully because they don't believe Jesus was bodily resurrected from the dead. They believe his body disintegrated, and then he appeared as a spirit creature three days later. The Bible doesn't say that, though. When he appeared in the upper room, the Bible says simply the word appeared or stood in their midst, not materialized. Some people like to take it to mean Jesus was walking through walls, but it doesn't say that either. All it says is that he appeared.
and spoke to the apostles in in uh, Matthew 28, one of the last words that he spoke to those apostles, the people that were gathered there, he said that all authority has been given me in heaven and on earth. So that meant that the angels were subject to him too, right? Of course they are. Yeah. So but, uh, then we can reason on that. You may have noticed that she uses the phrase reason on that nearly every time I ask for scripture to back up a statement she has made. She will take an isolated scripture and then engage in what is called eisegesis, which is essentially reading your own interpretation into a passage or verse separate from its true context. That that refers to Michael as an archangel, which is a number one angel, and Jesus was made number one angel. But hang on, where does it say Jesus was an angel, though? Well, an angel just is a spirit creature. But again, that, but Jehovah is, is spirit as well, right? Yeah. So there's more than one spirit creature. That was a bit of an error on my part. Jehovah is spirit, but he is not a spirit creature. He is not created. But I think I let her line of reasoning confuse my words and I got sloppy. I just wanted to point that out because I should have worded it much more accurately. Well, they're all spirit creatures. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're not physical creatures. Right. right. Know, Paul speaks about uh, a spiritual body and a physical body. So, okay, but... So God isn't a physical body. But it still doesn't... It's a spiritual body. Right, but it doesn't say anywhere that that Jesus is an angel specifically, though? Uh, well, we have to use that term because how else would we describe a spirit body? Is a spirit body. So the term in our limited vocabulary, vocabulary would be um, angel. This is a huge assumption on her part. We don't know what to call a spirit body which has its own issues, because where did she get that term from? So we just say angel? Says who? Says the watchtower, of course. Well, but again, that's, now I know that's your, the teaching that you're under, but like that's never been the historic teaching of the Christian Orthodox Church. Well, so a lot of people uh, don't we're see not going by church teaching, we're going by what the Bible says. What I was trying to get at, and should have clarified, is that no Christian reading the Bible throughout all of history ever came to that conclusion. She's not going by what the Bible says, she's going by what the Watchtower says the Bible means. But my point being that you're saying, well, this is just naturally where you would go, but it's not naturally where people would go, so... Well, where, how would you describe it then as spirit, if you, other than the word spirit person, or spirit individual or whatever, how else would you describe a spirit person, an individual? I'm not, I'm not really Would you describe certain. him as a man or a woman? No, you well, would describe him as an angel. Not necessarily, because like we said, Jehovah is also spirit. So if we're talking about, so there's more than one kind of spirit, right? But an angel is a spirit. So Angels are spirits, our, yes, like I but... Say, in our vocabulary, we would um, c- consider him consider him an angel because he's a spirit creature, you know. But then why couldn't we consider him Jehovah since Jehovah is spirit? But Jehovah is his name. He's a spirit. Yes. To describe him. But like you, you said... describe him as a man. But like you said, there's different names in the Bible for individuals too, right? So Yeah, but I'm not referring to men. I'm 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 not referring to names. I mean refer, I re- referring to how would you describe that individual? A physical man person, you would mm-hmm. describe him as a man or woman and as a child. A spirit creature, no matter what it is, it's to, it would be angel. It would be God. That's why it's in in Psalms uh, it refers to uh, uh, the angels as God. What she's doing here is called the fallacy of false equivocation. Again, the whole issue of category or ontology is a confused disaster in the Watchtower teaching. She's got human beings, angels, and God all kind of blurred to varying degrees. 
and the fallacy specifically comes out when she picks some aspects of angels and of Jesus and pastes them together to assume that he's an angel, though the scripture never calls him Michael. It never calls him an angel. Not once. The closest she could come would be the instances in the Old Testament that talk about the angel or messenger of the Lord, which is often referring to the pre-incarnate Jesus appearing to individuals. But I can see why they don't use that line of argumentation, because those same passages sometimes make it abundantly clear that they are speaking about Jehovah directly, and that would destroy their entire argument. Next, she will claim that possibly Psalm 90 says angels are called gods, but then she realizes it doesn't. So after that, she pretty much abandons that argument because there is no scripture that says that. Which Psalm is that? I think it's Psalm 90, I think. Okay, and of course, there it also refers to judges as being gods. Yes, I, and I know that one. That one's actually, um, if you read the context, I think you'll find that interesting when it's talking about the calling the judges gods, he's doing so in a in a chastising way, basically saying, "You think you're gods, you know, because they're so uh, simple." No, not no, not chast- No, no, he's not chastising. That's not, God isn't. That would be sarcasm, and God right. would not see the sarcasm. You don't think he could be sarcastic? You don't. You don't see the sarcasm in that. Do you that think, wouldn't, that do you think Jesus is Jesus ever sarcastic? I find it so interesting that she won't even consider the context of Psalm 82, which is indeed very much chastising the wicked judges. In fact, that's Jesus' whole point when the Pharisees are angry with him for calling himself God in John chapter 10. He doesn't quote Psalm 82 in verse 34 to defend himself by redefining the meaning of the word. He is comparing the Pharisees to the wicked judges and telling them they are doing the same thing as the judges were doing. In the next video, we'll pick up right here and go through the final small portion of this particular phone call, which, if you remember from an earlier video, was supposed to be about the subject of hell.